Hi guys, I'm in the middle of a brew day, as you can obviously see behind me. I've had a couple of people ask me about my kind of cleaning regime and how I go about that process. So this is just gonna be a real quick video to go through how I do that and the process that I follow, which uh, at the moment anyway, touch wood seems to be working quite well and I haven't had any issues with, you know, infected brews or anything like that for quite a long time. So. Uh, hopefully, my method is uh, reasonably decent. If you've got um, any comments on how you do it or feedback, then feel free to put them down in the comments below. But uh, let's have a look at how I do it anyway. So let's go. So I'm just gonna be focusing on the cleanup of the actual brew day equipment in this video. So I've got my boil on. The mash kettle has obviously been drained and sparged through. The HLT is basically empty now. Uh, so I'm gonna start off by just clearing out the mash tun while I've got the boil on. Obviously, if you're doing a really involved brew with loads of hot drops and stuff, you might not have time to do this, but I've got a good 40 minutes before I need to do anything else with that so I like to basically get started on the cleanup uh, in the middle of the brew and it just saves me time and make sure that I'm not hanging around for ages at the end uh, trying to clean everything up so it helps to kind of shorten the whole brew day for me if you um, try and get ahead of the game with the cleanup and uh, do things like the mash tun at this point rather than waiting until right at the end so I'm just going to take this outside and empty it out now I always always use a mash bag in my mash tun. I've talked about this before on videos, I think, and um, certainly on the uh, the podcast as well. Uh, so uh, it's one of the things that we talked about in the kind of brewing gadgets episode, I think. So go and check out the hop edition if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah, I'm taking part in a uh, podcast with a few other brewers and um, that's the sort of stuff that we talk about. Anyway, so the mash bag makes it really easy to clean out the mash tun because I can just lift out all the grain, go and throw that on the compost heap or in the bin or whatever I want to do with it. And then really it's just rinsing it out. I might need to give it a little bit of a scrub on the inside with a sponge to remove any residue or the kind of flowery sort of protein type stuff that um, sometimes sticks to the side. But mostly I can just hose it off and then it's good to go. Uh, so I'm going to go and do that. The HLT has only had water in it. so. You know, I don't really clean that except for when I'm doing a, um, a full kind of strip down of the brewery um, and might take things apart, but it's not generally going to be a problem because it's only got hot water going through it anyway. So yeah, let's get this mash tun outside and we'll empty that out and um, then we'll come back to the rest of the cleanup, obviously, once we've sorted that out. Right, so as I said, take it outside and then I can just lift this whole bag out. So this is a 50 litre mash tun and this is a kind of made to measure bag from, where is it? There's a label on here somewhere. There you go, brewinabag.co.uk. These are really good quality and uh, I would definitely recommend them if you're looking to get one. Obviously great for actually doing brew in a bag, but I think this is a, a really good tip to um, use them to line your mash tun as well. Might be problematic if you're doing recirculation because it will slow, um, the uh, the work down a bit, the flow of the work through it, but should still be able to get it working if you've got the right setup. Anyway, so I'm gonna just lift that out. Always good to do this outside because you're still gonna get a little bit dripping out the bottom as you can see there. But as you can see, no grain or anything to have to worry about cleaning out in there. Give it a little bit of a sponge down around the sides and a rinse out and then that is good. So I just give the grain bag a bit of a rinse off to get most of the uh, the grain debris off of it. And uh, then I'll normally put it into the washing machine just on a rinse cycle, no detergent or anything like that. And it comes up really nice and clean every time. So you can see I've had this bag for quite a while and it's not, you know, it's not stained or manky looking. Um, and for me, this is 100% easier than having to clean out all the grain from the actual tun itself. So yeah, it's my method and I'm sticking to it. 
So just a soapy sponge to clean the residue around here. I don't generally bother using any, um, you know, proper kind of cleaning, brewery cleaning products or anything to do this because, yeah, just a bit of soapy water seems to be more than sufficient. And then just give that a rinse through with the hose and uh, it's good. I will, you know, strip the taps and stuff on everything occasionally, but I don't find that I really need to go too hefty on the cleaning with the mash tun as long as I rinse it out thoroughly. So that's how I do that. So there we go, that's looking pretty spick and span. Uh, I'm just going to upend this and let it drain out and dry fully before I put it away and certainly before I put the lid on it. Um, with all of this, I think it's really important that you just make sure that the um, the pots and everything are, are properly dried before you store anything away or close things up so you don't get any of that sort of nasty mildew and um, kind of mouldy stuff going on, which will happen even if it's clean. Um, I've certainly found that in the past, so yeah. So this is my cleaning agent of choice. No, it's not Jacob's Crackers, it's sodium percarbonate. And I'm just gonna get a couple of scoops of this and chuck them into this bucket down here. And when I collect the hot water off of my chiller, it's gonna go into there and then that's gonna be my cleaning solution for the kettle and the chiller and anything else that needs doing. So it comes up pretty clean just with a good rinse, but I'll pop it in there and that'll help to just remove any protein and hops that have been jammed up inside it or in between the coils. Lots of people ask me if this chiller, uh, the twin chiller type design is difficult to clean, but I've always found that as long as you follow this method, all of this crud just kind of floats off of it, as you can see here. So you just rinse that off again after it comes out of there and uh, it's usually good to go. So I'll just rinse this out and get the worst of the um, the boil crud and hot break off of the sides. And, uh, and then once that's rinsed out, we will um, run the percarbonate solution around in this using the pump and that will clean this, but also obviously all the pump and the pipe work as well at the same time. Again, it's obviously really helpful if you do this as soon as possible after the brew, because otherwise that stuff there would have dried on and it would be much harder to take off, but I'm sure most of you know that already. Pretty clean. So yeah, that's done. Now just to run the uh, cleaning solution through that and all the pumps. Right, so the kettle's back in here. I've got the percarbonate solution in that. I'm just gonna let some of it run down through the pump and the tubes. First of all, just to clear out any of the gunk that's um, left in there from the last bit of the transfer. Um, as you can see, some of that is already coming out into the bottom. Um, sometimes this, yeah, gets a bit jammed up or airlocked. So I might have to give it a bit of persuasion. So now that's running relatively clear. I'll just knock the pump off and then I will take what is normally the spar arm, not the spar arm, what am I talking about? Whirlpool arm, pop that back into there, turn the pump on and then it's just going to obviously circulate that cleaning fluid for me and um, I'll get in there with a the sponge 
and get any bits around the side that it's not touching. And then that's, uh, that usually gets it up nice and shiny. So yeah, just getting in there with a the sponge. Um, make sure you get all that residue that kind of builds up in the center there or around your elements if you're using elements. On this one, because it's an induction plate, it tends to just form a circle on the bottom there, which if you don't get in there with a bit of elbow grease will eventually burn on if you leave it and become a lot harder to shift. So a little bit of work regularly rather than a lot of hard work if you don't do it properly. Yeah, so that's, uh, that should be pretty good now. And obviously we've been running it through the pump and the pipe work the whole time. So they should be nice and clean too. So what I'll do now is just drain that back to the bucket. And then once that is all emptied, I will just rinse um, with clean water any residue or little bits and pieces that are still left in there. So you normally have a few bits of like hot debris and stuff still floating around in there that will stick. Uh, so we'll just rinse that out and then we're good. So the kettle's all done. That's looking pretty shiny. I will flip that over um, again, just to make sure that it kind of drip dries and there isn't any moisture left on it when I put the lid back on there. Um, last bit, I'll normally just go around and give the uh, the pump and the tubes a little squirt through with the star sand. So there's obviously um, a few nooks and crannies inside there, which until you take it all apart, you're not going to be able to get to or make sure that they're dry. Um, so I'll just uh, yeah give those a squirt of star sand and then let them uh, again drip dry over the bucket and that's basically it so brew day done clean up done normally if i'm properly on it i can get that done in about half an hour in terms of the cleanup from the end of um putting the beer into the fv so yeah hopefully some of that might have been useful to you well there we go that's brewery cleanup or my way of doing it anyway I'm certainly not here telling you that's the only way to do it. If you have your own method or you've got any tips or tricks that you want to let us know about, uh, stick them in the comments. Or if you've got any ideas that you think could help my process be improved, then uh, yeah, let me know. So um, yeah, not the most exciting of topics, but uh, we all know that it's a really important part of the brewing process. So hopefully uh, that might have been helpful to some of you. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing.